Hi everyone, I'm Eric, and today we are going to be doing more depression. I mean, we're going to be doing Exist Elementals, a Text Talks Biotech Part 1. We're going to jump right in and see what happens when everything goes bad and there's nothing good to look forward to because it's all a downhill slide into the degeneracy of the clans. I like playing clan mechs. I like clan lore. I just hate that downslide into them. It, it just... It's not getting easier, man. And for what everyone's telling me, I'm still in the happy portion. <sighs> so, yeah, we have our liquid courage. And by that, I mean it's coffee, maybe a little Irish. And we're going to jump right in and see how this goes. We all know how it goes. There's no getting around that. No matter how much we want. Oh, God. Tex, why the hell did you have to make these good videos that I actually want to watch? Because they're not... They're just hurting me, man. Ugh. You guys know the deal. There's a link to the original videos down below. Hit them up. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And warn me if I need something harder for the next one. I'm assuming I needed something harder for this one. But this is what I got on hand. And we're going to see how well I survive that first. I hope that's a joke. I'm not sure it is. So let's get started. Star League in exile was now dead. A casualty of desperate Staring people off on the heart what note, they huh? felt was their best option at that point in time. And That's a sadly, lot of atlases. There was to be one more casualty. What? The death of his friend, his ally, his confidant, General D. Chevalier, no. hit Alexander Kerensky. No. Hard. He was in the planning stages on striking back at the rebels, but don't sadly, on the eighth of June twenty eight oh one, he died of a massive heart attack. The worst of the inner sphere had been carried with him on the exodus, and then in a moment of strife manifested among colonies they had founded, and there would be no going back to the brief peace they had achieved. Esseldia veterans, at least those who'd not been forced to muster out, those who had only known and chose to maintain a soldier's life, were for the first time truly leaderless. The Star League in exile was now gone. Oh, wow, I put that a lot more Irish than I was expecting on that one. Oh, boy. I rem that earlier comment about it not being strong enough. Oh, I was wrong. Oh, boy. That actually distracted me from the fart. The fart that, yes, I, wow, it's hitting me already. The part that, apparently we're just starting on Kerensky's death. As much as I think Chevalier got a good send-off, dying in battle, succeeding, saving the people he thought were important, and maybe the woman he was in love with, which is a conspiracy theory, but one I'm going to go with because it makes a better story. As much as he got a good send-off, Kerensky's end, just watching as everything he wanted fell apart again. And this time, there's no force he could fight against. It's his own people turning on him. There's no big bad. There's no Amaris to fight. It's just... Feels inevitable, and he dies there. That's... Yeah, Chevalier got the better end. Hell, I actually think the... PDF Catalyst Games puts out showing what would happen if the SLDF stayed... Still gave Kerensky a better end. He, there, he was assassinated. He died thinking that he was doing the right thing. Instead of... Watching as his right thing fell apart before him helplessly, and there's no good outcome. God damn it. We're just, we're just starting right off with a giant gut punch. And by gut punch, I mean they missed and hit a little further south, but also still hit my gut at the same time. So it's like that one-two punch, but with a single fist. Oh, God. Reduced to a series of factions closely mirroring their inner sphere counterparts, each faction vying for supremacy were now all too Just eager to wield the vast arsenals they had Verge. stockpiled, and yes, through them began to forge new states for themselves. SLDF commanders in the field either fell in with the factions or died trying to put them down. In what would soon become the Exodus Civil War, in essence a microcosm of the First Succession War, the surviving SLDF leadership remained paralyzed. 
Each of the remaining generals tried to assert their own claims to Kerensky's legacy or began siding with one faction or another. But Nicholas Kerensky had his own ambition. Perhaps it was a result of having lived in his father's shadow all of these years. Perhaps it was watching his father's noble dream die before him. Perhaps it was the cycles of grief and loss he'd seen in the course of his life. His I don't even know why people are so pissed off at him, other than the stuff earlier on where I wanted to punch him in the face. But right now, all I can think is, Tex, what are you doing? What are you doing, Tex? Why is it about to get worse? What are you doing? He hasn't even brought in the angry music yet. It's still that sad, mournful dirge. It's, it's like the remembrance of hope because it's Kerensky, but also he's dead and everything's falling apart and you can't do anything about it. Just, why is... <sighs> his father, his mother, Star League, Star League in exile, all were gone now. But there's another consideration for what he did next. I feel his previous illness had something to do with illness? it. Illness? Nicholas had caught the same brain fever his mother had. Oh. A disease that wreaked havoc on the early colonization efforts and known to cause extensive brain damage in its victims. He'd fought it for two weeks on the verge of death and yet... Syphilis? He'd survived. That's a brain I disease that caused that changed him. In the wake of his father's death, Nicholas Kerensky oh, claimed weird. leadership of the SLDF. He didn't see himself as a son of a great man any longer. He saw himself as the heir of a noble ideology, a legacy that could in time save them all. The SLDF and all it represented would be his. He would keep the dream alive. How the hell can Tex make the phrase keep the dream alive sound ominous? It probably doesn't hurt that they're just photoshopping him in there and it looks out of place, but also at the same time, that is perfectly fitting because if he looked like he fit in on this podium, it would not be right. I, oh, God, this is... Oh, I just realized why it's hitting me so wrong. Because I know there's about to be some massive perversion of everything Kerensky said and every ideal he just happened to carry. And we're about to watch that just get wrong. It wasn't the craziest thing to claim. After all, that's inner sphere standard operations. Yeah. New boss inherits the job of the old boss. And Nicholas Kerensky saw himself now as a great man. There's but now that. was his time. You hear that? His destiny was laid before him. You hear but this? Now. In the background, the music has changed. It's gone from the slow death dirge, where it's still like hope lost but remembered, which is Kerensky's final theme, it feels like, to Nicholas's. The drawn out strings, the woodwinds being pulled out. I'm not even sure if it's a woodwind or a string instrument, but it's drawn out with such a long precision that it feels like it's building to something. But you don't know if it's going to lead to a high note and good things or it's going to just suddenly drop off and kick you in the dick. Which is what I would say if I didn't know exactly how this goes so I know that dick punch is coming. Not the dick kick. That's a separate one just for extra flavor. Now oh, was his time. His destiny was laid before him. Most of the division commanders decided to take their chances anywhere else. Most of them had no interest in following the unproven son of Alexander Kerensky in any capacity. I'm guessing he killed a lot of Those who didn't did. laugh in his face politely walked away from his notions of grandeur. You have to try to understand their reasoning. Nicholas Kerensky had not fought as they had in the Amera Civil War. He knew nothing of command, of war outside of history books. He was merely the son of the great General Alexander Kerensky. The great the general was now was dead. From their Everyone perspective, wasn't. his noble dream of a Star League in exile had died with him. Many of the veteran commanders of the Amera Civil War were dead or ancient or fully intent on carving what territory they could as warlords and wrecking their neighbors in the process. With as many weapons, warships, and supplies as they had, there was now no course but war. So why not fight it out? They saw their best option as to throw in with an existing faction and do their best to survive. It was the Inner Sphere way, after all. Joining the Sun, the presumed heir of a great leader, and trusting his ability to restore order was a leap of faith that few were willing to take at this point. Okay, this is going to sound weird because Tex has made it very clear he hates Nicholas. And I'm listening to him and like, yeah, there's a lot of menace there. 
but he's making it sound like most people do the smart thing of not trusting him. But in the presentation method Tex is going, it sounds like that was the wrong choice. Which is weird because fuck Nicholas is something that's been ingrained in me and that little treasonous bit earlier definitely didn't help matters with that. But Tex is presenting it as if they're making the wrong choice by not following him. That is a very weird juxtaposition for how he's been presented and how even Tex himself has called himself out and saying, I am not biased here. I am massively biased. Fuck this guy. I, I get it because they're doing the inner sphere thing of just like, you know, fucking themselves and just living in their own shit. But uh, basically it's a more human thing, but let's say it's the inner sphere instead. But I just... <sighs> They're doing what makes sense and what is rational, but it's being presented as if it's the wrong choice. Don't get me wrong. I don't think they're making the right choice either. I just think it's the less wrong choice based on the information we have. Hmm. What is Tex leading to here? Point. After I mean, all, the last leap I've of faith they'd would, taken no, resulted in what promised to be a gruesome conflict and all the ruin that it entailed. That's not to say General Kerensky's sons were alone. Despite everything up to this point oh. and the hopelessness of the situation, some still believed. Oh, Fanatically. So Nicholas there. Kerensky gathered those most loyal to everything him. Everything else is a different... Or if not him, his father's cause, which he had now assumed as his own. I just want to point this out. I love the little edit here. Because at first glance, because we're talking about Starly, you think that's normal. But everything else has a different... I guess, point and how thick the lines are, where this one is much too fine, so it stands out against it by that measure. It looks pretty good, though. He told them that the Pentagon worlds were now doomed and that they must commit to a second exodus, to leave all of the factions behind, to leave the poison of the inner sphere's politics behind and start a new He's society. He's going to nuke them, aren't they? I ask myself, what kind of people would be willing to walk away from that? The people who are looking at the inner sphere and thinking you're absolutely disgusting and I absolutely hate you. And they're going to leave nukes behind. There's no way he's not destroying those planets. There, there is literally no way someone who watched Amaris, someone who watched his dad, someone who saw how everything went down, isn't going to look at this and go, fuck them. They made their choice. They can die for it. And he doesn't have the resources, he doesn't have the people, so he's going to take what he has and he's going to literally destroy these planets, isn't he? I, I, I cannot see any way this doesn't go that way. Oh, fuck. Ooh. I made that a lot stronger than I realized. But yeah, I can see why this is, uh, why the clans were really limited in resources, because they really shot themselves in the dick. To dick punching for everyone. One last jump oh, no. to follow the son of a great leader in pursuit of an ideology not quite clearly defined or well defined. people who are dreamers for one nicholas kerensky may not have been the ideal man for the job at hand but <laughs> perhaps the only man remaining with any semblance of a vision enough of them did see him as the inheritor of his father's dream nicholas in turn went to every pentagon world and made his objective known he wanted to escape the violence of what was now being called the exodus civil war and to carry the true legacy of star lake onward he wanted to leave the cycles of tragedy and violence the inner sphere had always known from the pentagon cluster a bare few thousand volunteers joined him only two thousand I'm sorry, he, I'm sorry, did he just say only 2,000? Fuck, no wonder they had to do the artificial births. They don't have genetic diversity enough to survive any other way. Also, great that they developed the tech to do that suddenly, but... If I didn't know what's coming, if I didn't know that the clans are a giant betrayal of everything Kerensky wanted, well, some more than others, Wolf's, Wolf's okay and Ghost Bear are pretty awesome. But other than that, I just, <laughs> it would sound like Nicholas is making the right choice and yeah, he's doing the right thing. He's carrying on his father's legacy. He's being the dreamer, but there's not a chance in hell 
I'm believing that. And even hearing the right words coming out of Texas' mouth. Between that and the music that's still just pulling you in the background is that draw on your soul as it just slowly stretches it out. Between that and foreknowledge, you know it's not going to end well. Even if he's saying the right things, I don't trust for a second he means it. And even if he did, it's not going to work out that way. And with what resources they could take, they jumped. They landed on a recently colonized world in oh, a nearby Karinsky They didn't fuck everyone over in the background. In Russian, it means dream country. To his credit, Nicholas Kerensky later came back to save as many as he could. Oh. It was January 2802. He actually did? Major General Nicholas Kerensky. Yes. He'd given himself that accolade. Major General began using the assembled remnants of the SLDF Navy and carefully organized a exfiltration from the Pentagon Civil War huh. of over a quarter of the surviving civilian population to this new world, adding to his meager resources nearly a million farmers, merchants, and workers. Further, his forces were bolstered by the majority of the Navy having opted to side with him rather than duke it out with capital-scale weapons over what amounted to a handful of planets. Okay, one... I love this art. It's so different than all the other ships I've seen, but it's so freaking cool! Oh, yes! Sorry, I, I love spaceship art, but especially when you have the cityscape on them, and it just could be random tubing for all I know, and I don't care because it's cool! Oh. Also, he brought 2,000 people with him originally, and those were the... Well, I guess soldiers. He has a much more realistic spread between civilian and military populace before, where everyone who wasn't a soldier beforehand was suddenly not a soldier, and that didn't work out. Again, there's a reason banditry when you disband an army becomes so possible in most uh, nations that didn't have a freestanding army that was constantly maintained. Yeah, there was a lot of issues with that in human history. The answer, though, was just really expensive. But... Honestly, if he's taking all the ships with him, he could probably just bugger off at this point because if they have all the ships, or most of the ships, they could just, well, destroy every other ship in orbit and get the hell out of there and let them just stew on their own planets. I don't think they could rebuild the technology to get to orbit anytime soon, just with how barren some of these worlds I've been told were. They were great by comparison to living in a ship, but short of that, I heard they were desolate wastelands, essentially. Which... Again, compared to a ship, not that good. But still, though. Ugh. And the so-called leaders who are now fighting for bigger. dominion over them. However, of the mech jocks, aerospace pilots, infantry, and tankers of the SLDF Exodus forces, only the 146th and 149th divisions fully sided with him in his dream. Oh. From his new vantage point, Nicholas saw the cycles of history were inescapable. Humanity in its current state would endure only occasional peace before solving things the old way. I mean, he's Good old-fashioned warfare vis-a-vis -vis grade A war crimes. He realized that the SLDF had left the inner sphere only to burn new worlds in the name of whatever cause they could drum up. He saw old ways of thinking, inner sphere ways of thinking to be toxic and a direct contributor to what was now unfolding. Knew He's that in time, wrong. this second exodus could very well do the same unless drastic action was taken. This new world had every potential to become a messy battleground in time, unless, unless he were to change everything. Oh no. He saw that changes were absolutely necessary to prevent- Really? War is great. Oh, that's a tank back there! Oh, wow, I did not realize. I thought it was like a building, but no, it has a Gatling gun on it. Also, holy shit, that is a Gatling gun the size of some buildings. At least as long as a few. Damn. I just... I, I'm very conflicted right now, because on the one hand, I don't think Nicholas is wrong. But on the other hand... I know he is going to be wrong. Oh, this is not good. A future world from burning what he intended to make. 
drastic changes, <sighs> and not just what a society oh, stood for, but the very fabric of society <sighs> itself. Miss Dog. What if he were to change the balance of a society, what? its aim, governance, and focus? The old ways to him Plan were system. flawed as they gave into biases, oh, beliefs, I miss and allegiances, which yeah. inevitably resulted in mutual annihilation, and he saw himself as a great man. The father of a new nation, guided by righteous ideologies oh, no. given to him by his father. Oh no, he thinks he's he right. That's precisely the, worst thing the individual to forge a new civilization to correct the flaws of the old. And so, in the name of his father's legacy, and in his own avowed belief in the nobility of Star League as an ideology, he reshaped the world from the top down. He saw himself as prime architect of this new world, and this would be a new society, free of cultural bias, of prejudice, he made a of city backward belief systems, in and any allegiance symbol. to the old ways, or as he saw them, backward thinking. Nicholas envisaged a new society founded principally on meritocracy, not the inherited power dynasties of the inner sphere. But I find that entire sentence very funny because <laughs> what it turns out to be is not a meritocracy. It's if you're a warrior, you win and you are always the best. Now, internal to the warriors, there's a meritocracy. But outside of that, no. I'm assuming if someone was really good, that would change, but that would really depend on the clan and it just... Mm. Uh, I don't like this is making me like Nicholas Krensky more, but also I can't stand that because I don't like what comes of everything. It would be a divisive society by the warrior elite, the best, the bravest and brightest that they had. Being a bit of a madman, perhaps as a result of his earlier mental trauma, serious illness, or just zealous belief in his own wisdom broken brain he borrowed ideas from history that fit his vision for a utopian society upon closer examinations it would be clear that he'd taken policies and governance designs from various powerful factions of ancient terran history from <sighs> the mongol hordes to honor-bound shogunate era japan and even the strict totalitarianism of the 20th century chinese state yep using these ideas he created a Everyone template has for a brave new world, one which would hopefully allow for the old really? ways of the inner sphere to be finally buried. Oh my god, they actually did the art style. Sorry, it's just this type of posing is very much indicative of two things, and some of which are really connected. Specifically, 1920s era glorious aspects. I know there's a specific type of art style for it, but in general... It's something you see a lot in the 20s. The neoclassical movement, maybe? I, I could be very wrong. I'm probably not right about that one. But in the 20s especially, there was a massive push to have art that was grandiose, that was great and crazy. When you think of the um, movie Metropolis, the art style that was greater than life, but hyper-defined and hyper-masculine and hyper-sized literally larger than life and figuratively larger than life putting a symbol that's bigger than life and also making it physically massive so that you are dwarfed by both what it means and what it physically is so if it fell on you you would literally and figuratively be crushed at the same time which was then also repurposed by the communist movement in russia specifically to have those people's works ah huh? It's something that most dictators do, but usually apply to himself. But in this one, it's that style of we, the people, but also I'm first. It's that style of propagandistic art. And they're applying it to the clans, at least is how Texas chooses. So it's the perfect choice because it's also the exact thing. We're all in this together. I'm first because I'm in the warrior cast. Fuck all y'all. And here we go. He'd split his chosen people into 20 organized units, oh, he chose which that. he soon called clans. Is that a rat? For each of them, he would choose a totem he felt represented a facet of their identity. He actually chose totems? They course. went along with this as, after all they had lost, they reunited in one thing principally at this point, faith. And wearing the mantle of his father's legacy, he would sh Why are there pink turkeys? Shift that faith into what followed. At the heart of each clan was a reinforced mech warrior battalion of 40 warriors. Of the thousands and thousands of troops who had joined his only exodus, 40? he rigorously tested each warrior on their abilities to allow only the very best to continue to bear arms. 
This was to be a meritocracy after all, and a warrior society to boot, for in his eyes none were nobler than a warrior bearing arms to defend the society they led. He felt the army structure of the SLDF was deeply tainted and did away with lances, with standard military organization and hierarchies. He dreamed up a new way to fight, a new way to wage war, far from the perceived barbarism of inner sphere practices. The new clan organization was fairly simple, using schoolyard rules of arithmetic. What? Five mech warriors made a star, two stars a binary, four binaries a cluster, several clusters to a galaxy. People have explained this number system to me many times. And like all things that involve numbers, <whistles> yep, not even going to pretend I get this. Rank structures were similarly reformed. There was to Star, be, in theory, at least no more Who's militaristic bigger, bigger, glorification biggest. of the individual. No grand reward for being an exceptional individual, save for being tested again and again in order... Oh, okay. Yes, the clans played American football. And just like American football, they're punching each other in the face. Well, I think it looks like he's tackling him, but with how his face is looking, it looks like he was punched, especially with the fist. Oh, that's a football. I thought that was an egg. That would definitely change the game if the ball was super fragile and also made from an ostrich. Especially without general brutality if you're not going to play this. Although, honestly, it's closer to rugby at this point. In order to attain a, a higher robot? level of responsibility and tests further to ensure you were worthy of keeping that position. Only the very best would do for his ruling elite. Re um. The fuck? I get it, it's supposed to be the clans have genetic achievements and they can really... Just, just, uh. This is from the 80s, back when the idea that brain size actually equated anything to do with intelligence. Ugh. Regardless Stupid. of their life up to that point, a lot of only the, the other ability ones, to excel on the field of combat... Also needs to be said, random Mad Max EXP! Who'd have thought? ...was important for what would become a warrior cast. Yes. Nicholas Kerensky was intent on saving the society of the Inner Sphere by imposing a caste system. The warrior caste would be a ruling elite made of the sharpest minds, the strongest bodies, and the most exceptional talents in the conduct of war, set against each other in continual trials. To allow only the strongest to endure would form a society of seemingly peerless combatants. And thus, everything I thought was admirable about what he said has been proven to be full of shit. Because everything he just said pisses me off. I like things about the clans. The clan structure itself, I just get annoyed at because it's so stupid. That said, Texas made it very clear the guy literally has brain damage. But still, he went back to save people. Nice. He wanted to save things. Nice. He's trying to live up to his father, even if he's definitely not saying that. Nice. He chooses, he just chooses the dumbest way possible. I just need, I'm not sober enough. Oh. Ooh, that was a bigger sip than I meant. God, that was a lot stronger than I thought it would be making today. Ooh, is it, is it getting warm in here? That's okay, wow, I really should have uh, gone with something lighter today. Whew. I will say that admirably enough. Nicholas Kerensky submitted to these rigorous trials himself. I won't let them destroy themselves. Oh, destroy themselves. Wait, what? 2815, he had declared himself Il Khan, supreme leader of the clans. At least, that's what their history says. A history I must note again that he had a hand in writing. Now, with 20 clans of 40 warriors each, initially that covers 800 what? individuals. They were as the ancient... Okay. I just find this weird because this is showing something that you almost never see in mech warrior art. One, humor proportions in the face, especially the earlier it is, the more and precise and more exaggerated the facial proportions are. Two, full body coverage. And very technologically adept because there's like lines over it. At first, I thought this was actually a cyborg, which wouldn't really be a thing until the world of Blake comes around and then it's way more body horror-y. One of the few times where Battletech, from what I've seen, goes full-on 40k Mechanicus. Yeah. Two. They're actually showing that brain helmet! Sorry, I, I just... 
people keep telling me there's one, there's a direct brain interface with the mech, and that's really cool, but it's never shown. I cannot find art of it. I haven't looked very hard, but usually when it comes up, it's not of that. Here, though, you can actually see the brain helmet, all the connection pieces, the connection points to the body. I just, this is so cool. Never see this. Ever. Terran saying goes the cream of the crop. This warrior class was the end result of generations of horrific warfare, and they were as hardened as humanity could provide. And while a ruling warrior elite was established, the question arose, what about the rest? Nukes. There were a million civilians wondering what the hell they'd just gotten themselves into. Uh, slavery, Fleeing basically. from devastation and thankful to at least be alive. They were willing to put up with some changes, but Nicholas Kerensky had plans for them as well. Yeah. Other casts would soon follow, but he had more pressing issues at the moment. Survival, chief among them. So by 2821, 19 years and change after the second exodus, and four short years after establishing himself as supreme ruler of this new According warrior society, he decided that it was finally time to fix the issue of the world he fled. A very the final Pentagon solution, world even. Would be the first major trial for his new society. Does he to nuke gain them? resources, to save face his father's legacy, and prove the legitimacy of not only his leadership, but of the society so he's he'd basically engineered. Going full on he wanted to without take back the Pentagon nuke. worlds, reclaim the entire forces of the Exodus, and impose this new society upon them. This. I mean, on the one hand, yeah, he's following the legacy. On the other hand. It's only five planets, which are a bunch of people. Bunch of, I can't speak today. Bunch of people run into the ground from decades of war against themselves. Well, roughly two decades, about nineteen years. It, it, it it's just such a smaller scale than the Amara Civil War that I'm just sitting here going. If I wasn't absolutely certain the other side is very much a bunch of veterans who know what they're doing, I'd say this is kind of lame. It's it just the scale has gone down from the entire inner sphere to five worlds where they know where each other are and not where you're from. They can find you because it's a single jump, but uh, it's like he's building himself up to a mythic figure, but on such a smaller scale, it just, he doesn't really measure up. I mean, even all the batshit insanity of him aside, he just doesn't measure up to his dad. His plan Which is probably part of his Operation Klondike. And it was a terrifying success. Namely because the extensive preparation, intelligence gathering, and endless battle drill of Nicholas Kerensky's forces. The fighting forces of these new clans hand drilled, fought, and competed against each other endlessly in war games. War games that were at times bloody contests between combatants over who is the ultimate warrior that day. For years, endlessly, they- Okay, I just want to look at that game because that was so cool. I know people have mentioned this mech and I've seen it before, but this is the older style art, or I guess style of art depicting the older age, which everything is hyper-sized. Again, people say most mechs don't get above maybe two or three stories tall because they're really not that big. This one is huge, considering how it's towering over people. It's more Gundam-sized as opposed to, well, normal battles tech scale. Which is still huge, but not to that level. But yeah, it does seem like he has a massive advantage of having time to prepare and train. Between combatants over who is the ultimate sense. warrior that day. For years, endlessly, they had drilled, testing themselves against each other in every possible manner. With every trial undertaken, they were Whoa. preparing for a Old full test of like their it. abilities on the fields of battle to Looks come. Like it's quickly sketched out. As well Nicholas Kerensky's forces exhaustively prepared themselves for conquest, the Pentagon worlds had waged war among themselves over what dwindling resources remained in the name of whatever heathen cause they could dream up. The Exodus Civil War continued in a brutal fashion, unchecked or unchallenged. In the wake of the second exodus, the survivors of the Pentagon worlds had battled each other without major pause for 20 years. After ferocious conflict, they had generally mismanaged their own situation to the point they were about to collapse. They fought each other with the same relentless ferocity currently unfolding in the inner sphere. <sighs> I want to say everything he just said is surprising, but it's really not. You had a bunch of people who... Ooh, just realized that's a Black Knight. Nice. But it's a bunch of people who literally lived war and all out fighting the entire time. 
it's not surprising they return to that. Because as fucked up as it is, it's probably more comfortable than not fighting. Not not even just the entire idea of here's all the divisions we have, here's all that stuff. When you look into the human psyche, you default in times of question when you're not certain about yourself to what you know best. And these are all really competent veterans in a war. Even the people who didn't make the cut for all the crazy hopper and stuff that were pushed out, even the civilians, most of them who came from the SODF were still very competent veterans. So it makes sense to default back to a war footing because what else do they really have at this point? Kerensky's dead. The Exodus failed. And they're basically turning them gu their guns on themselves. Oh, and then there's that crazy asshole Nicholas who's like, hey, you'll be really funny. Dedicated clan structure so no one can ever do anything. Again. You're basically all slaves now. Have fun. Uh, I also realize not every clan is like that. But I'm unfortunately aware that some clans are literally not that good. Acting in many ways to mirror the First Succession War in all but scale. Every weapon at their disposal was being used to the fullest of its capability. <sighs> Nothing to say, just really like the art. Oh my god, that's so cool! Are those giant... No, oh no, okay, it's a smaller ship. You can see the size here, because that's the bridge. And then you see the gun sections behind them and just... Ah! Probably frigate-sized. I don't care, this is so cool! Sorry, I just love spaceships. This is so cool. The veterans of the SLDF had fallen into old habits, and using the skills they developed during the Ameris Civil War, they nearly burned each other to cinders to fight for <laughs> marginally habitable space. Kerensky had up to date intelligence oh, on the exact condition of each pentagon. It's one of those. World yeah, it's one of these blowing up, up here. And from traitors now plying the space lanes, Same his engine. own vast naval forces reactivated for the invasion itself. Five separate fleets were sent out, one for each Pentagon world. Oh. They would observe and report the situation They're in detail. Creaking, so the there's no chance was of conducted response. in phases, and from listening posts clandestinely placed in system, all colony activity was recorded in detail and broadcast back to Ilkhan Nicholas Kerensky. The clanners plotted the location of all colonial vessels, all spacecraft both active and derelict. Sorry, I just the parallel here is actually hilarious to me. I thought before the parallel between the clan when it came into the inner sphere, just that blitzkrieg attack, and then how that was basically what happened when Kerensky attacked Amaris in the inner sphere. The parallel between that was kind of crazy. Now we're just looking at it in miniature here, and it's the exact same planning. The clan doing an overwhelming firepower blitzkrieg, hitting all their targets at once. The only difference is Kerensky and the clans later on had the entire inner sphere to fight through and they just basically shot down to get their target and this is like that middle ground where Nicholas is taking the Kerensky approach of we're going to crush you on the inside and take everything as opposed to the clan of Blitzkrieg he's doing the middle ground of we're Blitzkrieging and taking everything it's literally half of what's going to happen in the future and half of what his dad already did as far as plans go I just find that really funny because it's literally the midway point between the strategies of the two different invasions. It, it just works. All communications and their content was thoroughly analyzed to get a better read on the situation. Slowly, through passive signals intelligence and direct observation, fleets got an exact picture of what was happening. And most importantly, where to strike. Battle and this... Everything he just said is, oh, I just, oh, I just saw what we're looking at, and oh my god, that's so cool! I just need to get, like, a giant poster of the space art. Because I like Battletech art of this style. But I love the space shit part of this style even more because it's so cool! But more importantly, everything Tex just said, how they got great intel to know exactly where to strike... It's also why I find the clan so stupid. Because they're focusing so much on the mech and the warrior and the honor. And I'm just sitting here going, Bitch, you won because you had good intel. It's also why they lost 2Kid. Because the other side had way better intel to make up for overwhelming firepower. It works. Also, they had knowledge of just how stupid the clans were and honor bound. and just That's other stuff I've already talked about. But still, 
I personally subscribe to the idea that Intel is way more important than firepower because a freaking rock is infinitely more dangerous if you know where to hit with it than a gun that you don't have the slightest clue where to point it. If you can't hit your enemy, doesn't matter how big the blast is, until the blast is so big, it doesn't matter because you're not going to get anything out of it. Yeah, they had good intel, and somehow this didn't become an intelligence state. You know, if it was written in the future, it might actually have been a clan based around that. And I fully expect someone in the comments is going to be like, well, actually, there was this one clan. And they'll give me a long description about a really cool information. I'm actually really hoping someone, honestly, you know what? I don't even expect it. Please, someone do this. Tell me which clan is information warfare based. And if there isn't one, I'm willing for you to lie to me. I really hope you do. Please do. I, I just want that to be a thing. Battle planning was exceptionally thorough. Each of the five Pentagon worlds would have four clans assigned to invade. And Oh, that's... I thought there was a bigger ship in the background, but if you could see the bubble there, that's a starfighter only. Why does it have wings? I know people keep saying they're fins to reduce heat, but that's that's not how that works. It's a it's an in-universe thing. I'm just gonna roll with it. Hold them. The invasion itself was the first clan blitzkrieg, and in essence, a true test of Nicholas so Kerensky's cool. new society. This operation would showcase what they had learned, as well as the leadership, vision, and wisdom of Nicholas Kerensky. Oh, this is so cool. They had cast Look at off that. the old ways, choosing to devote themselves to the legacy of Kerensky and the dream of a better world. Oh. Is that just an artistic standpoint, or did they actually build something up here? Or is that what it looks like when a ship is still mid-jump, or is it exploding, or what the hell is that? But would it help them here and now? It is worth noting that at this point, the survivors of the Exodus Civil War piloted barely functional equipment. Oh. Also, this is a really weird picture for me because it's mechs helping in ways that don't involve shooting. And you can see the scale here. These are probably closer to actual true scale. Still a little big, but they make a lot more sense here because you can see how big they are. They're roughly... Maybe if that's six feet, that's probably 12. They're about 24 feet tall, estimating very, very roughly. So yeah, it's still a large mech, but it's not nearly as big as some of the overwhelming sizes here. But it's so weird because I don't think I know of any other Battletech art that shows a mech doing something that didn't involve shooting or posing or being on parade rest. And here's two of them working to remove rubble. Huh. I'd say that'd be unrealistic for a mech, but apparently there are robots in Japan that do train track fixes that are essentially giant mechs like this now. I only found this out yesterday, and I have no idea if it's true. I'm not looking it up because I want to believe it's real. Okay, full disclosure, I was originally planning on finishing this video today, but then, um, when I said it was a lot stronger than I was expecting, I really should have taken fewer sips and a lot smaller ones. It, it is kicking my ass right now. I'm not saying that I'm not going to finish the video because I can't. I'm saying that if I go further, I might just pass out and miss the end of it. And then I have to go back and find out what point did I pass out. And I would rather not do that. That that sounds like a bad idea. Whew. Also, there's that little, when you drink enough and, uh, yes, yeah, just coffee. When you drink enough coffee, then your mind moves, but it's like a second behind when your body moves. And I don't like that feeling. Wow. Okay, maybe a little less strong for the next video. God damn. More importantly, though, just... I have so many mixed feelings because it... Nicholas is coming across a lot more complicated than I thought. On the one hand, and it might just be his own propaganda to make himself look better, and I would love if there was a reveal later on of what actually happened, or the other side's propaganda because maybe there's like a internal faction that just remembered and hated him. I don't know. But I want to see the juxtaposition of what he says with what we're seeing now, which makes him look pretty damn cool, even if he then does something really damn stupid. I want to see the other side. What is he not telling? What did he write over his own history as? Or even what the other side would portray it as? I don't know, but I want to find out. So if anyone knows where I can find that out, let me know. And if it's in the later video, don't tell me. But just tell me to keep watching and I'll know exactly what you mean. Which I will hopefully still remember because I I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to remember because that was a lot stronger than I meant. Yeah, it's good stuff, but... I'm going to have to 
water that down with a little coffee next time. Yeah. Ooh, I can taste colors. All joking aside, though, thanks for everyone watching. I'll see you guys in the next one, and warn me if it's something I'm going to need to maybe not water this down more for. Yeah. It's all the same. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to, there's a link below, original video from Tex. Hit him up. Tex, the Black Pants Legion are really awesome. Hit them up. They're, not, they're just really good guys from what I've seen. And yeah, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Adios.